Welcome to A Road to the Pit, A High School Basketball Journey. I'm your host, Ed Nunez, and joining me, as he always does, my co-host, my son, former St. Pius basketball player, also a member of the 2013 St. Pius basketball coaching staff to beat the Albuquerque Academy. Ironically, Academy and Pius will uh, square off in the Egg McMuffin game, which uh, he and I will have the coverage of. Also, a ProView producer and play-by-play broadcaster, Nick Nunez. Son, welcome to the show. Dad, glad to be on. Excited to speak with our guest, Tim Tim Chacon, get a different perspective on uh, high school basketball here. So ready to get into it. Well, you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, Coach, uh, uh, the road to the pit does not just include players and coaches. And our special guest today started officiating uh, in 2007. He's been selected to officiate the state tournament for the third time. Uh, played a varsity player four years at Panyasco High School, three state tournaments, uh, runner-up his junior year, state champion. In 1981, under the legendary Leland Abreu, who's also the AA Player of the Year in 1981, our special guest, Tim Chacon. Tim, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Ed. Good to talk to you. You know, Tim, uh, congratulations, number one, on being selected to the state tournament. It's quite an honor, you know, for anybody to be selected to the state tourney. Tell us about how, uh, and we're going to go over some uh, some names here from the uh, ABOA which I was a member of, you know, for 22 years. Mm-hmm. Joe Gonzalez, Casey Ramos, Jose Chavez, Gerald Gurule, Matt John, Daniel Apodaca, Carmela Garcia, Amos Gutierrez, Wade Miller, and yourself, Tim Chacon, being selected to officiate the state tournament. Congratulations to all the officials in this region and all the officials from all the, throughout the state. Uh, Tim, tell us, uh, you know, how, you're, how you feel. It's your third state tournament. And I had a chance to talk to you a couple of times. How do you feel about uh, the the honor about you going to the state tournament? Well, I mean, it's huge, absolutely huge. You know, uh, I think people that get into officiating, uh, no matter you know at what age they start or or what their background is, that goal is always you know you want to call in the pit, you want to call the state tournament. That's that's uh, why we do that way. To begin with, you know, some some go in different directions like college and all that. But I'm I'm consider myself like a purist of uh, New Mexico high school basketball. I'm crazy about the state tournament. I haven't missed it since uh, the first time I went in 1976. I was 13 years old. Just went to one game, uh, the double A championship game between McCurdy and Eunice. My first th- state tournament game that I ever saw. I went back in '77. Again for the Double A Championship, Jal in Cuba. Watch that game, and then uh, '78. I remember going to a few more games and watching the uh, Pack Pit uh, 1978 State Championship game between Albuquerque High and Santa Fe High. Just crazy. So you know, by that time I was, I was, you know, that that was it for me. I haven't missed it since. The following three years, '79, '80, and '81, I played in the state tournament. Um, so that it's like uh, the event of the year in, in my family. My daughters and my wife know that, you know, state tournament, you ain't going to see me. I'll be at the pit or, you know, watching games from eight in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. And uh, so be able to be able to come uh, in at a, as an official, it's an honor. It truly is. You know, since one you earned, uh, <clears throat> Tim, you mentioned some of the uh, injuries you've had and you're still out there and, you know what? You're at that position now. You know you may have lost a step or two, and you're still you're still very fast. But experience, knowledge, you know how to call a game, man. You just know because you feel it. You know, uh, and 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 I, I've seen you work, and uh, you know I've talked a lot, and uh, you know I think uh, you do a, a great job. Um, I'm going to ask you one more question, then I'll turn to, uh, to Coach Nunez. He has some questions for you too. But as a ball player, you know you came down to the pit. You know I was lucky to come down to the pit as a North South All Star. My son played at the pit twice. I don't think you ever forget that experience. And then you want a state championship. You know, talk a little bit about, and, and again, under Coach Abreu, you mentioned Coach Abreu had a success wherever he was at. He didn't play around, man. He didn't play. You know, he was old school. And I mean, old, old school, right? <laughs> um, like Henry Sanchez at Bernalillo. Mm-hmm. Those guys didn't play around, man. We, we know that. 
but talk about the uh, experience of you winning. You don't never forget that, Coach. Never. You know, you were a state champion, and you never forget that. Talk about that experience in 1981. Yeah, it you know it it's what was amazing is that uh, prior to Coach Abreu getting there, and it was like just the perfect timing because he came. His first year in Pinasco was my freshman year, uh, and uh, it was just like perfect timing. And previously, Pinasco was just, I mean, they just never won anything. They they were last in district, last just never anything, any kind of success in Pinasco basketball until Leland came. And uh, I guess back in the 50s, there was a team that was pretty good, but they never went to state or anything like that. But they were pretty good, I guess. But I remember growing up as a kid and uh, and just going and, you know, Pinalsko was just getting beat, getting blown out, you know, as a little kid. Because I, I started playing when I was really, really small and just loved it from the get-go. So the timing was perfect when, when Coach Abreu came. We were freshmen. And we had a group of freshmen, really good. I mean, some of the some of the guys that that are uh, graduated with me that played um, unbelievable. Rudy Romero, Joe Gunle, Clarence Vito, guys like that that I played with. They're amazing basketball players, and, and it was just perfect timing. And and he taught us our freshman year. We were horrible. We won six games. My sophomore year, we won twenty games, made it to state. And uh, back then, they had a third place game, and we. We played in the third place game and lost. So we came out fourth in state. Our second year, first time in history of going to state. My junior year, we were uh, 27 and five and finished runner up to Clayton. Clayton was really good, strong. They were really physical for us. They, you, uh, I don't know if you know um, Marty Sice. I'm sure you do. Yes, yes, yes. You know Marty Sice. And uh, he has, uh, he took over that website for uh, Chuck Ferris and, and you see that picture of, of the Clayton Yellow Jackets in 1980, and they looked like a college team. They were just huge. They looked like they looked, they were for sure bigger than your four four A team Highland. I can tell you that. Just you have to drum up that picture and see what I'm talking about. Right, I will. And we and we uh, we lost to them in the championship game, and um, I remember running uh, running off the floor after that game. We, I was crying. I was hurt. I wanted to be a state champion. It was our junior year. And and my aunt came down running. I remember came down and she, and she just she was she had tears in her eyes and she just embraced me right at the mouth of the of the of the ramp and just grabbed me and just she you know, I love you. You did so good and they go I go we're going to get it next year. So from that moment on, you know, it was with Leland you practice all the time. It's not I, we were in the gym. We played the championship on that Saturday. I'll, I guarantee you we were in the gym Monday doing something, lifting weights, shooting free throws, practice. You know, it, it's 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 business the way he does it. So we we come to our senior year, and there's nothing else. We already have a red runner-up trophy. There's nothing else but the blue, and um, we ended up winning at my senior year. Um, and it, it's like you say, you never forget about it. People to this day see me, especially, you know, the, all the Norteños, like this week at the state tournament, they, they still talk about that shit. And it's, I mean, still, I'm not, sorry. <laughs> they talk about that stuff 40, what is that? 41, 43 years later, 43 yeah, you know. years ago. And and they still remember remember us and talk about that. And um, and uh, we have, we have. Uh, kind of a distinction because we were we're if you look up the in the NMA records and in in the even the NFHS records, we, we were one of the highest scoring teams um, in the history of high school basketball in in the nation. Hobbs is up there. I think they actually were number one, and we and uh, our team was is in there because uh, Mar again Marty he he uh, he did an interview with me to, to get all this information and about you know our, our scoring 108 points a game average and uh you know they uh, and a lot of people say well but you guys are double a well get a ball let's play right now i'll show you and you uh Let, let's you, do it <laughs> yeah you sure did i think it uh, must be remembered your 108 points were without three point shots hobbs average oh goodness yeah. if we would have yeah. had a three point shot holy 
<clears throat> yeah, so there was stuff. there were several of us that could hit that. And again, same thing with Hobbs. They, yeah. they didn't have the luxury of the three point uh basket back in those days either. You're exactly right. They averaged one fourteen in nineteen seventy. Unbelievable team. Yes. Coach uh, Coach Nunez, go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Chacon wanted to dovetail off uh the subject of your playing career up at Pinasco. You know, we've had some guests <clears throat> from northern New Mexico. We had James Baron on from the Santa Fe New Mexican. We had Mateo Contreras on from Las Vegas Robertson. I wanted to ask you, what do you think it is about northern New Mexico, Penasco, Pecos, all those towns that makes basketball so special? You know, I it's like some of the some of the, the communities, uh, like you mentioned Penasco and Pecos, and there's not um there's not like a a, those are small towns. There's not a population like that can can lend itself to like a a football team. You're not going to get forty athletes that can man a football team. And in those towns, there's no little leagues like for baseball. But every driveway in in the town has a basketball hoop up <laughs> everywhere you go. I, I mean, I remember going to. 20 different houses to go play basketball. Everybody had a hoop. Everybody had a ball in those, in those towns. And um, like I said, at Pinasco, we didn't have little leagues. We had football. I played football in seventh and eighth grade, but we were just tackling dummies. We were for the big guys. We weren't, <laughs> we weren't anything else. I never learned anything. And then they did away with it after my eighth grade year. And uh, so, you know, that, but like I said, there's always a ball and a hoop and guys willing to play in, in those little communities. Makes sense. This, Coach, go ahead. Next question, uh, the venues. You know, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get up north and get into some of those gyms that are so special. But I see pictures, Mesa Vista's gym, Las Vegas Robertson's gym, Santa Fe High's gym. Tell us about some of the venues that were special to you when you were playing and since you've been up there. Well, I mean, if they run the gamut from uh, – at McCurdy, McCurdy High School, they had old McCracken Gymnasium, which was like, like a little bit bigger than my bedroom. <laughs> I kid you not, it was so small, <laughs> so old. I, I mean, uh, you'd run into people in, on, on the sidelines, and we played in that. And th since then, they, you know, they've gotten a new gym, uh, of course, but we played in venues like that, like in McCurdy. That was just the tiniest little place. And there was another, there was an Indian school in Santa Fe, St. Catherine Indian School, another, just, just this tiny little gym, but they had some teams. Joe Royball was the coach over there. I don't know if you guys know who Joe Royball is, but he was the coach of Santa Fe Indians. I mean, at St. Kate's Indian School. And uh, that was a little tiny thing. And then we'd play like a, uh, NRG tournaments would be at uh, Española High School because they have a very – I, I think you guys have probably seen it. It's a big, yes. <clears throat> big gym, a big venue. And with the teams that were involved in the NRG, when, when I played, um, that place would be packed because they, they would uh, – you know, you're talking about Mesa Vista. They were tough in the late 70s and 80s. And uh, uh, Powake, they were a 3A school. But they had some teams with uh, uh, Coach Rodriguez and his son Billy and his nephew Tommy and uh, uh, those guys. They were tough as hell. They they were third place in in state um, in AAA, and we, and we would play them. We played them in the championship of, of the NRG uh, in '81, and we played them in their tournament championship in '81. And they were really good. Uh, Billy Billy uh, Rodriguez played at Stephen F. Austin, I believe, in Texas. And then uh, he was in the pro leagues in Mexico for a while, him and his brother Ronnie. Uh, so, you know, and then uh, just every community. It was just, it was amazing. Mesa Vista fans, they come. Escalante, Peñasco, Pecos, Dulce, all those. I mean, you would need a venue like, uh, like, um, Espanola, that place I remember playing championship game of that tournament and just all the way, both sections, top and bottom, packed. People standing on the rails, packed. It, it was so it, it was it's different. You know, it's just different. Northern New Mexico is is different. I I I I was um 
calling the game at Cibola one time and 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 uh the the guy one of my partners I can't remember who it was but there was like a couple of parents and you know a few fans and we're like he was like there's nobody here and I and I just was thinking to myself the first thing that popped in my mind was NRG Espanola it you know packed I don't know I'm in a, I don't know how many thousand people fit in there but I remember the, coming into the gym to go play and the lines already forming when we're getting there like an hour or two hours before the game and just it was just like a, a rabid thing the way the fans were from every community it's just, yeah. it's just hard to it's hard to describe but I I'll it's something I'll never forget it's just crazy coach turn it to you you know uh, Tim we want to ask you about your uh, you know that's a great explanation about northern New Mexico basketball yeah, there's a uh, gosh people are uh, crazy about their basketball up there there's no question you know, about it and your ex- explanation is to why you know there's not a lot of football up there where you played and basketball everybody has a, a hoop in their in their yard we did too my brother and i my dad who uh, was not a sports guy had to work built us a court in our backyard mm-hmm. you know so but uh you know tim i gotta ask you about your your uh the reason you got into officiating i remember when i i uh, played at highland and i coached at highland and then you know because of my job i couldn't coach anymore because of the hours but then I decided to get into officiating. And I remember I was telling my son this, that I used to be one of the worst there was on officials, you know, yelling, you know, what the heck, you know, getting kicked out of games. And uh, and then when I became an official in 1989, I had to understand it's a whole different thing. That you don't, you're not a player anymore and you're not a coach. You know, there's a lot to learn. So talk about what it was that made you want to be an official. Uh, you know, you're going to your third state tournament. You'd call some games on Friday. <clears throat> and Saturday in the uh, state tournament in the first round. Talk about what it was that made you want to be an official. Well, I I also coached. Uh, you know, I coached uh, Penasco after Rudy Aragon, and, and we was, like, rebuilding, but we made it to the state tournament. And, in fact, Chuck Ferris, uh, he dug this out, and he said, you're, you're one of the only two people in the history of New Mexico that's played in state tournaments, coached in state tournaments, and officiated state tournaments. And I, I go, oh, that's cool. And uh, he told me who the other guy was. I think it was a somebody from Albuquerque, but I can't remember who it was. But he told me that. But w- when I coached, I was not very good with the officials either. But that's looking back at that. If I ever coached again, you'd never hear me say a word to any official. I <laughs> because it, you, you know it, Ed. You know it's a whole different thing. I I I swear to God if. If I coached again, I I won't. But if I did, the only thing I'd ever ask for is, hey, can I have a timeout? <laughs> That's it. I'll leave you alone. People don't understand how hard officiating is. And as you move up, it gets more demanding because, you, you know, you get you start getting higher quality games. The, the pace of the game is faster. The athletes are better. And it's not, I mean, the physical thing, it, it's harder as I get older, obviously, but the mental is 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 hard of it. The focus it takes, and 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 just you know, being able to make quick decisions. Okay, this is what I saw. This is what this is what it looked like to me, and you know, and um, you have your partners, and you know, it's just the process of gathering information from your partners in the place that you need to. But you know, most of the time it's just you, and it's your primary. That's my call. This is what I got. Go report. And then move on to the next play. That's all you can do because, you know, there's no replays in the high school. There's like you get one shot at it. You give it, you know, you, you, you try to process it and make the best decision and you move on. You know, you know what I'm talking about, Ed. And, Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, and, you yeah. know, every play you every whistle you blow, uh, somebody's going to be happy and somebody's going to be pissed. <laughs> it's, 50, it's 50. The, that's the yeah. nature of it. <laughs> you know, Timmy, I want to I want to I want to ask you this, too. And I want you to let everybody know that, yes, we do go to training. Yes, we went to classes. Yes, we went to camps. We just don't go out there and meet each other and say, okay, on the floor, we we have a conference before the game. You mm-hmm. know, talk a little bit about that because it's important for people to know. Uh, you know, th- people talk about consistency amongst officials. I get that. Sometimes you may be calling with a different partner that calls things different than you. You know, mm-hmm. they, 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 you, you've got your way of calling. They've got their way. And sometimes consistency can run into each other. We know that. And, you know, 
thank God we've got officials, but talk a little bit about the preparation before each game, before each season, Tim. You've been well, to camps. Talk a little yeah. bit about that. Well, yeah, like, I mean, the, the season ends this week no matter what. I mean, it's state championships are Saturday, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm I'm just prepared to do any game they give me and be happy with what I – I I don't care. I, it, I'm doing it. I'm – I'm not one of those guys complaining about the game I didn't get. I'm going to just work hard in the game that I do get. But the season ends and, you know, you take a little break, but then it's time. Okay. Refocus. I got to, okay. I got to, I got to get, I'm going to go to a camp because I want to stay sharp. Uh, I, I do less and less like AAU stuff anymore because it's harder on my body. And, you know, I, I don't do as much AAU as I used to or AYBL and all that stuff that you do as you're, as you're moving up the ladder and uh, and then what helps now is just like videos and watching clips and and plays, you know, and, and you can learn all on your own just by watching a play 25 times. You know what I mean? And and um, so it, it's just, you know, it's like continuing education. You just keep keep the process going as far as learning. Uh, and then, you know, the other thing is uh, keeping your keeping yourself in shape. Uh People think, oh, you, you, you're in good shape because you're referee. No, <laughs> I have to stay in good shape to be able to referee. You know, it's not referee that refereeing that keeps me in shape. I, I, I work out. I, I do, uh, you know, I go to the gym and do. Uh, I get on an arc trainer and, and go hard on that to keep my my cardiovascular fitness. You know, and it's hard because I, I like to eat. <laughs> I'm northern New Mexico. I love that food. I, I like to prepare that food. Uh, my daughters come over with their their husband and fiance and that, and and we cook and we eat, you know. <laughs> but but that's that's what it is. But it's just preparation all the time. You're not. It's not like uh, in the rule book all the time. But you're you're keeping your body fit. You're watching plays, and then you know I do. I I pick up the rule book and just oh yeah, I remember that like. You, I'm not like there's some guys that are rules guys like there's that are better at rules and stuff like that. Um, and I'm OK with them. I, I get them. But so I have to refresh my memory, you know, get back in the rule book and just stay, stay fresh, stay current. And then, you know, there's there's uh, things that they they tweak every year and not not major things. It could be like you, stuff having to do with uniforms, stuff, you know, that you got to remember. Right. And, and it's it's just a lot. So you're always you're always doing something to stay prepared and get prepared. One of the things that uh, Kip Luna, I'm going to turn this over to Coach Nunez here, but Kip Luna, the late Kip Luna, said this: the game is evolving. We must evolve with it. I still remember him mm-hmm. saying that. He's a big proponent of watching video. Watch yourself. The tape yep. doesn't lie. I still remember him saying that. And you know, you've gone through uh, a lot of commissioners. You've had Kip Luna, the late Al Baca, uh, Nate Acosta, and now it's Jess Martinez. So you've you've been through a few. Um, Coach Nunez, go ahead. Mr. Chacon, I wanted to talk to you about the numbers of the ABOA um, in terms of how many officials you guys have. I've had conversations with coaches. Um, I've also spoken with Daniel Apodaca, who's another member of the ABOA Association. And he's telling me the numbers are down. And one thing I'm seeing is that, you know, C team and JV games for both boys and girls, sometimes those have to be canceled because there's not a lot of reps. And so what is your message to younger people, you know, in the younger generation, 20s, 30s, who are considering being an official? Uh, what keeps you doing it? Well, let me tell you, uh, w- when it comes to that, I I talk to kids that are that I'm officiating. And they're not during the game, but like if I see them after and I go, hey, man, we could use a good a kid like you come and officiate. You should think about that as you, as you move on in your life because we need officials. We're short. It's a shame that games are getting canceled because of uh, numbers. And then the other thing that, that happens, too, is uh, some – officiating is not for everybody. Your dad can tell you that. It's not for everybody, okay? Yeah. And I've seen a lot in, in my years, 16, 17 years or whatever I've been, I've seen a lot of people start and then they disappear yeah. because they can't handle – fans they can't handle coaches or they you know it's just not for them they find that out and uh so so you know that's one of the things and a lot of it also is like sometimes our numbers are good 
but there's a difference between numbers and availability okay sure. because because uh people have jobs people have lives people so so there, there could be like a tuesday night or a thursday night where there's just so many games to cover but you know 40 50 officials got something going on and they're blocked that night so it's a question of availability not really numbers you understand sure. what i'm saying yes and um but I mean, I, I don't know what the answer to that is. You just try to recruit more, I guess, you know, recruit, retain and train. And, um, you know, but it, it's tough. It's tough because you can, you could, you know, so there's been years where we're close to 200 in our group and that's pretty good, but it's, 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 it can be a numbers game, but it's also an availability uh, sure. question. Yeah. And then I wanted to switch gears and ask you about calling games in the state tournament. You know, it's got to be special for officials because you're not just calling games with people from the Albuquerque Basketball Officials Association. You're calling mm -hmm. games with officials from across the state. So tell us a little bit about what that's like. Well, you know, no matter who, you, who your partner is, uh, you you, you got to just trust that your training has been similar. Every You know, every bit, an official from Albuquerque and an official from Hobbs, they, we all understand and know what our primary areas of coverage are. We know the rules. We know. So it's just a matter of blending in and, and, uh, and you know, having a really good long pregame, you know, before the game. Like some of the, the games I have this week so far, I don't know some of these guys. So it's, it's going to be basically an introduction first. Hey, you know, this is I'm Tim. I've been doing this for this long. Where are you from? You know, this and then and it but that transitions right away into the meat of the game because everybody's experienced, everybody knows, and and you know, they're you know, top officials in their region of the state. So it's gonna be interesting, but you know, once once that uh once you throw the ball up and it's it, tip it off, it's just you just get into that mode and trust trust your partner. That's important. Hey. I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on my primary, trust my partner that he's watching his, trust my other partner that he's watching his, and and make quality calls and uh, communicate on things that we have to and, uh, you know, deal with deal with whatever. Coaches, you know, during dead balls, a lot of communication, timeouts. I always like to talk to my partners during timeouts. Hey, just you got anything? Are you seen anything you know you, you learn you get a lot of information in that quick 30 40 seconds during a timeout that that you know can help your game out coach i'll turn it over to you you know uh, tim i want to ask you this um some of my mentors when i came in you know les williams was a was a, was a major one now Les, he can go two hours on one call as you know mm -hmm. you know and sometimes you know what though it was analysis paralysis, so I had to sort through that. Say, okay, I'm going to call my game. I know basketball just like he does, mm -hmm. but I didn't, I'm not saying I didn't learn. I learned a lot from him. Uh, great mechanics. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul Lawson might have had some of the best mechanics I ever saw. Mm -hmm. Paul was could run. Paul was a star. He was, and his knees went out on him, uh, yeah. you know, early. Otherwise, that guy, I think, uh, you know, would have been a college, even maybe even a pro official. That's how good he was. He, he was. He, I, he, I I I got to know him. That he was still in when I first started. So and uh yeah, Paul was amazing. And just a really good guy. Really yes. good guy. Mm -hmm. Um still is really still a very good friend of mine. So who were some of your mentors when you came in to the ABOA and and you know it guided you? You need that, right? You know, the guys that knew officiating would say, Tim, you need to work on this or look at that. Somebody you could kind of look up to a little. But you know, there's there's been a, a, a lot of guys that, that mentor you in, in different ways, you know what I'm saying? as far like from the from the the process of like evaluating you and and giving you constructive uh criticism and and teaching you the game uh you know i i'd have to say you know less as an as an as a evaluator just you know he tell you what you need to hear whether you like it or not yeah he would you know, he, didn't, he didn't tell you what you wanted to hear he told you what you need to hear and and that makes you better if you accept it you understand what i'm saying like yes absolutely some people some people wouldn't accept it and they'd be yeah oh, you know less this less that i i take it for hey this, this guy's in this position for a reason he knows what he's talking about 
sometimes you got to swallow your pride and, 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 and take it. So from that perspective, it, it was him, uh, Les. One guy that really uh, helped me when I first got started, and I know you know him, Ed, is uh, John Conitzer. Oh, yeah. So, so John Conitzer, I started working games for him for AYBL uh, before I even joined the association. Um, and, you know, I, I, this was back when I had my kids. Uh, they were living with me half time, living with their mom half time here in Albuquerque. And he kept telling me, get, get in the association. I think you could do good. Get in the association. And uh, I, I, for a couple of years, I was just like, no, I can't. I got my kids, man. I, I, I'll, I'll work games when, when they're with their mom and I have time. And he goes, well, you can do that in the ABOA too. And finally, like about the third year, he, he convinced me to join and he guided me and he mentored me. And I refed a lot of games with him, uh, AYBL games and stuff like that. And, and I would ask him questions and, and John was a good official. And, uh, I learned a lot from him of, on how to deal with coaches, crowds, stuff like that from John. Cause I saw him, I, I saw him just like, I'm not taking your crap. If you can't say like in, in a, in a AAU games, Hey, you're out. We're not, I'm not, I'm not doing with this. You're like, he just took care of business from that. Cause you have to have those tools in your bag too. Not just making quality calls and, and, and uh, the right calls and understanding plays and getting angles. That's all part of it too. But uh, interacting with, with coaches, partners, crowds, it, 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 you know, like people skills are important. And, and John was good at that. He was good at that. And, um, and then uh, another guy that uh, helped me back in the day was um, Carlos Torres. Remember oh, Carlos yeah. Torres? Yeah, we know him real yeah. well. Yeah, he's a hell of a ref, and just he was. Yeah, and and I just remember traveling like to Moriarty and places with him, and just discussing, and and he was he's a lot younger than me, but just just a really intelligent and and just you know perspective on the game that that you know I learned I learned stuff from him, and you know Carlos was really really sharp. And, um, you know, I think, I think he's helped his brother become his brother's hell of official Birdo. And I think one of the best. Yeah. I think that Carlos had a lot to do with that. I really do. And, um, so, you know, guys like that, 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 uh, and then just, just other guys, you know, you know, this better than anything, Ed is, is, uh, other guys that you just enjoy being around the camaraderie. You know what I mean? Right. From way back when I got started, I remember just, Eddie Gutierrez, I like hanging out with that guy. He was Eddie just was like funny, down, man. Funny guy. Earth, funny guy. Just like, like good people, and you know, you know, you, there's just guys like that, that that when I was getting started that were encouraging and stuff like that, and then, and then like, like you know, everybody like currently like just some guys that um that are coming up like Jarrell Mirabal. God, I just love that kid. Just he made a stack. He made it. Did he make it? He did. Yes, did he I... did. He did make it, and he's he's so impressive, and not and as official, yeah, but just as a person, and just being able to to hang out with a kid like that, a young guy with such a bright mind. He's going to be a doctor. You know, oh this man! Guy, yeah, this guy's in medical. He's starting medical school in July. You know, he's he's amazing, and and you you get the opportunity just to hang out with kids like that, and and humble, and just you know. It just you, you 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 have a lot of good experiences with a lot of good guys. Uh, James Vallejos, that guy's one of my favorite guys. One of my I favorite people too. Good James guy, Vallejos. good guy, good guy. And then, and then you know, like the older guys that I they've been around a long time. I really appreciate those guys, like Alex and Senias and Mark Chavez, and you know all those guys that burning. You know all those guys that yeah. have been around for a long time. Joe Mariachi Joe, you guys. You know, he, he made state tournament, yeah. He made yeah, state Joe tournament. Gonzalez. Congratulations to him. Yeah, and you know those guys because because we've been around so long and and you know we're veterans and and then you know these these newer guys that have come in that are oh my god they're really good really good officials and and like the the Wade Millers and and those guys that are that put the time in and the effort you know it's just fun to call games with them and when you step on the floor with guys like that you just it just gives you confidence. Oh yeah, they're, they're, you're the better your partners. We got just got a couple more questions for you, Coach. Go ahead. 
Yeah, Mr. Chacon, you kind of touched on it. You've already talked about it, but just wanted to ask what your approach is when you hear a screaming crowd or hear a screaming fan or a screaming coach. I mean, when we call games for ProView, I get a front row seat to some of the things that fans say to officials. And uh, I can't imagine what it's like to be out there on the floor, having to tune that out, be in the zone and call the game. So talk about your approach. Yeah, well, the, the, that's the thing is that we hear a lot. You know, you, you hear a lot. And, and you're going to hear a lot no matter what, because people are going to say it, whatever. But I've heard, you know, oh, Rav, you suck. I'm, I'm not going to do anything about that. Uh, that's a horrible call. I, okay, I, I get it. Look at the foul count. Uh, you look at it. <laughs> I, I don't care about the foul You look at the foul count. I, I'm aware what the foul count is. You don't got to tell me. I know. But trust me, we know what the foul count is. You know, you hear those kinds of things, but does that mean I'm going to throw everybody out that says that? No, no, no. But, and and I, you know, I have a pretty good tolerance, but there's things like I could give you an example, things that cross the line, okay? And I, I think we're okay with talking about this. Uh, this this happened in a girls game. I'm not going to say the teams or anything like that, but but my partner was happened to be uh, Wade Miller. And, uh, this was this was a few years ago when he was still young and coming up, you know he's he's uh, he's an enforcer now, you know. But he was coming up and we had a game and it was a girls' game and he made a call and this lady in the stands eight feet from me, she said, "You suck, you little white boy," you know. When it gets racial and stuff like that, then I'm gonna no that that we're not we're not. You can tell us that's a horrible call. You can tell us, look at the foul. You can tell us those kind, but those kind of things that get personal and are like egregious like that. So I, I, I got management told me that that lady and her husband or whoever it is they need to go. We're not, we're not doing that. We're not having that. Yeah. So you have you, you got to be thick skin in this game. You can't be, you can't just react to everything. If you're going to react to everything, you're not going to last long. You're yeah. not going to last long. You know, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Tim, you're absolutely right. We're going to I'm just going to wrap this up with one more quick question. Could Timmy, you've been great, man. You know, you reminded me a lot of stuff when I was out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're going to get anything that's not basketball. Thank God there's a uh, there's flagrant fouls now. Back mm -hmm. in the day when we used to play at Johnson, man, people don't understand <laughs> how rough those games were. They don't those, understand. Those you know, were then, crimes. <laughs> then we had the football players played in yeah. there, too, man. There was one guy that if you went in for a layup, he would just push you in the back. He didn't care. Uh -huh. You're in the air. You know, those games back then were very, very rough. So I'm glad. Yeah, you know, I we, went to we, fist yeah. the cuffs a couple of times with, with a couple of those guys. No, I know you did. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. Me and you were always good. We played hard against each other. We never had a problem like that. But you no, played no, hard. no, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about a couple of those football players. You're oh, no. Players, I, yeah. I remember, man. But, yeah. Timmy, you know, people are going to want to know. Toughest call in basketball for you. What's the toughest call? You know that – um the the most common answer to that question is the block charge and it is it is very hard you know and you get like i said you always get one crack at it the the block charge and the pass and crash those are those are tough plays but what what can be tough too is establishing like in the beginning of the game you want to establish the flow okay and and this has to do with your partners. Okay, if 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 I get this freedom of movement hand check, is my partner going to get it too? We because we want it that, consistency. You, yeah, you, exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. Because that's what the coaches tell you, right, Ed? We right. just want it, consistency. Yeah. If you're going to call that, he needs to call that too. So just getting on that same page, and it doesn't always happen, you know, because it officiating is is so hard, and it's it's not a perfect science that. You're not going to get uh, complete consistency, but you want to get to as close to that as you can. I think sometimes that is the most difficult thing, is just getting that flow and that consistency as a crew, you know. Because a block charge is that, if it's coming to me, that's me, that's my play, I'm going to make a decision, we move on, you know. It, it doesn't it doesn't affect my my other partners unless they had a whistle on it too or something like that but most you know you know how it is now how it's evolved now that those kind of plays are 
fall mostly on, on Leeds' shoulders and, and they take those plays. But it's just creating that consistency for that game at that night. Now, you know, that's a great explanation. Tim, and that's, not, that, and that's not really a call. That's like, you know, just you just want to get to that level. No, you're right. But you're, you're right. But remember, and, and I think your explanation is very good about partners and consistency because you're just meeting these dudes, man. You mm -hmm. don't know how they're going to call. You have to spend some time with them. And then mm -hmm. the next day you have another crew and another crew. And that's the way it is. So, exactly. you know, it's, it's hard because I know you, Tim, me and you are on the court. I know how Timmy's going to call. You don't know how Billy's going to call or Bobby or, or you know, or yeah. Sue because there's mm -hmm. women. There, you know, congratulations to Carmela Garcia, who's an outstanding young official. Oh, she's uh, amazing. Yeah. Anyway, he's Tim Chacon, uh, ABA of basketball official, uh, being selected to, for his uh, third state tournament official since 2007. We sure appreciate you joining us on Road to the Pit, a high school basketball journey. Uh, Coach, did you have any more questions? I'm sorry. That's all I had, Mr. Chacon. Thanks a lot. Good luck at the state tournament. Appreciate it, Nick. Thank you. For my co-host, Nick Nunez, I'm Ed Nunez. We'll be back next week with another guest on Road to the Pit, a high school basketball journey.